Hi, you guys. Welcome. You are listening to the Oh Crap Potty Training Podcast. I am your host, Jamie Galecki, and I am the author of Oh Crap Potty Training and Oh Crap, I Have a Toddler. So today I want to talk about the reset. So the reset, if you are familiar with my book, is the do-over. So let's say you started potty training and for some reason or another, it has gone to hell in a hen basket and you don't know what to do. So you reset. I want to go over a couple of aspects because in my opinion, recently I've run into some clients who are using the reset sort of improperly. Now, one of the biggest things about the reset is I feel pretty strongly it's when you, the parent have sort of lost control of the situation, meaning your child is struggling, you don't know what to do, you are at your wit's end, and you're either getting frustrated, like beyond, so that you're taking it out on your child, you're yelling, or you're crying, and it just seems very hopeless. Now, I will say that if this happens to you within the first three to 10 days of potty training, I really firmly believe that you have to work on your own distress tolerance. This is a process that takes learning. Learning means making mistakes. Yeah, there's a lot that you, the parent, are learning, right? Remember, largely you're looking for your pee patterns, how often that is your child pees, right? Like say they have eight ounces in the morning of some sort of fluid, you know, how many pees does that yield in X amount of time? So that's sort of the data you're collecting in those early days. You're also looking for their pee dance or their pee signal. What is their signal? You know, I call it pee dance because most kids do uh, some sort of manifestation of like a pee pee dance. You know, they're holding their crotch, they're walking on tiptoes, that kind of thing. They're, they're, physically kind of agitated, right? And that's the data you're collecting. So the first three to 10 days of potty training, it's really, believe it or not, so much about the pee and the poop in the potty. It's really about learning those two things because that will help you translate potty training into real life, right? So the early days you're sticking around home, you're really watching things and you want to be able to move away from that, right? So oftentimes I will hear from parents on day three that they've had it there at the end of their rope, they're giving up. When have you learned anything in three days, you guys? Three days in which you've had a lifelong behavior, lifelong, because kids are in diapers often before their first feeding. So we have to give them time. We have to give them time. And again, these post-pandemic babies, there is so much more anxiety in parents, right? Just in general. And a lot of these kids have nervous systems born under anxious conditions. So they're just, they're just different. And they, I have noticed that kids are taking a little bit longer to potty train. That doesn't mean they're not capable, right? Learning is done through commitment and consistency. Just like when your child starts to learn how to read, you don't give them three days to learn how to read. You know that repetition, consistency, commitment, reading the same books over and over again, these are the things that help your child learn, right? All of us, that's that's how it goes. So let's get that clear. I don't think you should reset after three days unless it's dire I think some of that is just working through your own distress tolerance and your own anxiety about it. And one of the things that happens is when our child struggles, I've said this so many times on this podcast, what confronts us as parents is what if we're a crappy teacher, right? That happens. So it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to think that you may have a part in this, right? And so that's the distress tolerance. And sometimes we have to watch our kids struggle when they're learning a new thing and we have to be their calm in, in the chaos. Okay. Now, the most common reasons that parents are resetting in this current time frame is because of pee withholding and because of poop withholding. If your child is poop withholding, please get my pooping solutions course, okay? It will fix you. It's new. It's updated. It will fix you. It will fix the issue. It won't fix you. <laughs> You're up. You have to fix yourself. <laughs> and it won't fix your child. <laughs> it, would, it will fix the pooping issues. Pee withholding, you need a consult. Rediapering can happen temporarily till you can get an appointment with myself or another consultant. But these issues tend to rear 
their heads again whenever you start. So it's best to get some help. It's not going to solve the problem. The other thing that we're seeing very common right now is people are resetting and then waiting years to potty train. So it is totally cool. Remember my age range for potty training is like the 20 to 30 month range. I find most people landing on 24 months. It's perfect timing. Yeah. If you're potty training younger than 24 months, I think there is an issue of, I don't, I hate to say readiness because I don't think that's a factor. I think there's, you know, timing. It's usually a little bit of a longer learning curve. So you can't do it over a weekend and send your child back to daycare. I always say if you're potty training on the younger side of my spectrum, it works best if you're a stay at home parent because it is, um, it's a tremendously hard unless you have like a good chunk of time off where you're home with your child. Uh, it tends to not translate over to daycare. Well, mostly because daycare is usually resistant of a child of a younger age being potty trained. They will flat out say they don't think it's possible, <laughs> even though I've seen it. <laughs> um, so when you reset after that young age, it's totally fine, right? Like I always say, it's better to start because you never know if you have a rock star. You may not have a rock star, but if you do, good for you. That's awesome. And there's no harm, no foul in doing a reset, you know, when the child's on the younger side. But what you want to do is you want to pick it up again within a reasonable time frame, Like, you know, if your child's 22 months, you might do it at 24 months or, you know, 26 months. You don't want to wait till they're three and a half because you're fearful or because you forget about it. The thing about the reset that I've always seen happen is that whatever you taught that first go around tends to stick with the child and it sort of marinates in their head. It sort of gels, you know? And so they have some learning behind them and you want to stack that. You just want to bring the household down to level. That's really what the reset is for is to bring everybody down to calm so that you can be a good teacher as the parent. You can be, again, their calm in their chaos, in within their chaos, not, not in their chaos, within their chaos. And it's just to give everybody a break and to bring the child down to baseline because they've probably started to escalate, right? So that is what the reset is for. It's not to, you know, oh, I don't think they're ready. That's not really a reason to reset. Every child is capable of this. I've seen 16 month olds potty train. It's not like readiness. It's often about scheduling. It's often about, do you have the time to devote to this, you know, so that they can go back to daycare or preschool. But if you wait years, number one, you have a completely different kid. I know that it seems like at two, you know everything there is to know about your kid. And I'm here to tell you, your two-year-old may look nothing like your three-and-a-half-year-old. And, a half year old. and I, I, just coming from experience of my own son being 18 now, he is so different. I thought I had his personality nailed when he was four. Pfft, he is just a different child. So the differences between two, three, three and a half, and even four, I don't think four-year-olds should be potty training. I think potty training should happen way be, well before four. Even in most cases with neurodiverse kids, kids with disabilities, anything like that, because the longer the child wears a diaper, the longer that habit is entrenched. And so I just, I really firmly believe that. Now, again, you're going to have a different kid. And you're going to be so far from your start date, right? That original time you tried to potty train that they're going to have long forgotten about it. Again, we want to utilize that sort of marinating. The, the, the learning's gone in. Now they're just taking a rest. You know, it's like summer break. Like that doesn't, you know, people talk about the summer slide, but kids just don't forget everything they learned in a short amount of time. So you want to do the reset when that happens. Now, that being said, if you are resetting and you know that you have a withholder, number one, I would definitely, if you can swing it, try to get a consultation because sometimes some hand holding can really help you work through your potential anxiety of like, oh my God, how's this going to go? It went so terribly the first time around. I don't know what to do. So that's an option. But I also want you to, um, you, you really want to be on that train of, Oh, I'm sorry. Speaking of trains, I just completely blew my train of thought. <laughs> when you're resetting and you know you have a withholder, um, you have a different kid, but what you 
you want to consider giving up night and nap diapers because withholders will often withhold until they get their night or nap diaper. So if you have waited whatever time frame it is and you want to re-diaper, I would strongly urge you to look at night and nap training at the same time because withholders Start the withholding just for the night and nap diaper. A lot of parents brush that off because like, who cares, right? Or parents contact me and they get very upset because they're like, well, they're potty trained, but they're pooping in their night and nap diaper. And I'm like, well, you're giving them the thing to poop in. Like their whole life, that has been the thing to poop in. So they're utilizing it in the way they are expected to use it, right? So just because your kid's potty trained during the day and pooping in their nap, it doesn't mean that... They, they translate it like, oh, okay, I have a I have um, no diaper on. I'm going to act like there's no diaper on. Like that's not how little brains work, right? So we definitely want to do night and nap training at the same time because you don't want them withholding and we don't want them to get into that pattern of withholding. And so I get parents, you know, like I said, in two camps, number one, how do I stop this? Well, very first thing is you've got to take away the diaper to see if you even still have a withholder. Because sometimes once we take that diaper off, the child's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll go in the potty, right? Or you can't expect them to have a diaper on and not use it for what it's meant for, right? And that's also why I'm against potty training and pull-ups because I'm like, we're giving them the thing to po- that they've pooped in all the time. And now we're saying don't poop in it. And that's tremendously hard. So I wouldn't do that. Um, and then Again, I can't reiterate this enough. A reset is just to bring a little bit of calm back, get everybody back to their baseline and not to wait years, not to wait till you have a different kid, not to wait till things are, um, you know, busy or pressed up against a timeline. So many parents wait. It's, you know, I'm recording this right at the end of July. It's like, so many parents are going to wait till the last two weeks before preschool to, you know, fully potty train their kid. And that just doesn't necessarily, you know, it, it doesn't build in enough time for them to learn. We really, really, really want to give them time to learn and solidify this because, you know, like any learning, just because you learned it for a week, that doesn't mean it's ingrained in stone. It's practice. You've got to keep going at this. So I I just, I really, um, historically, I've almost taken August off because the panic, the panicked parents I get a week before preschool, like, oh, I forgot about potty training and they need to be fully potty trained. And that that panic is going to kill the process. It's going to put too much pressure on the child. It's going to make you a wreck and you are going to be future tripping about it. So... So yeah, so that's what I have to say about the reset. Use it cautiously. You usually only get one reset. When I get a client who says, we've tried potty training six times and it never really stuck. And I'm like, well, that's a lot of repetition on like the child kind of not, the child giving up, right? And what we unconsciously tell somebody when they, when we're giving up is that I don't think you can do this. Now, that being said, I don't think that's the same case when you need to reset once. I think it's okay to say we all need a break, but you can't keep doing that. Remember, for a lot of kids, the the diaper is a security blanket. They want it. They want to be in it. So if your child's struggling and you put a diaper on it, that's not a that's not a consequence. They're like, okay, thank you. So if you do that over and over and over again, they know that they have that they just have to show a struggle and they can get the thing they want, which is, you know, the diaper. It feels good. That's what they're used to. And so it's just sad because I don't want you to I don't want you to get screwed for potty training. I mean for a preschool. I know a lot of parents have to pay for that ahead of time. I know some people have spots saved for them. And I don't want your kid to get kicked out of preschool because they weren't potty trained in time or properly or you didn't give enough time for that to happen. Or you reset and you thought, okay, I'm going to reset till I think so many parents reset because they're like, they're not ready. I'm going to wait till they're ready, which our societal norm now happens to be so much older than typical potty training age. And that's three and a half and they have to go to preschool or camp. And then the parents get screwed because it's not going to go well if you put pressure on the process. All right. That's all I have for today. I hope that was helpful. As always, I appreciate you listening. And if you like this podcast, please share it with other parents who might need some potty training help, like, and subscribe and review. And that would be awesome. Thanks guys. As always, rock on and have a beautiful day.